But we do got a sequel to look at next time. I mean, who knows? Maybe they made some improvement with this one. My name is Shaggy, I like to eat. My name is Scooby, but he got both feet. Me and my homies solve mysteries through cartoons, movies, and tons of DVDs. As old school goes, Jenny Wine, we've been kicking it since 1969. But Mr. Eat is off again. <laughs> stays in heaven because he too lives in fear of what he's created. Where are you? We've got to have money. I said in the last episode, seeing how the mystery begins left a generic and unmemorable taste in my mouth, and was hoping that this movie could have some room to improve. But there is one little problem with that. This came out one year later! So yeah, they wanted to do this one either because they had passion in the project, or they wanted to make a quick buck. Me and my homies solve mysteries through cartoons, movies, and tons of DVDs! I think I'm going on the ladder with this one, you guys. From what I've heard, this one is either the worst Scooby-Doo movie yet, or the worst one ever. But can it be that bad? Does it really deserve all the hate it's gotten since being released all those years ago? Well... Yeah... This is Scooby-Doo Curse of the Lake Monster. We start off with the gang chasing and then being chased by a hooded figure around this house, as they catch it and are shocked by who it is. It's you? What? Like it can be! <laughs> it turns out that took place in the future, as the movie takes place in the past leading up to those events. Oh man, I'm on the edge of my seat! I should probably scoot back. There's more room on here. We see Shaggy's waiting for summer vacation to begin. As the bell rings, he runs outside to school to see everyone's having a Hawaiian-themed PARTY! But of course, all of this is in Shaggy's head. Oh, so this is where Fred 3 got it. That shouldn't be a good thing. Shaggy and Scooby meet up with Velma so they can join Fred and Daphne in the mystery machine. Okay, there's something kind of creepy yet hilarious of Scooby taking that picture. Gonna put this in the spank bank for later. <laughs> You might be wondering how these two got together. Well, during one of their cases, Daphne fell out of a barn and landed in Fred's arms. That's it. It's literally love at first sight. The flashback in the first movie had a better explanation than this. They arrived at a summer job, which is working at a country club ran by Daphne's uncle. I guess he got tired of being friends with Louis Skullnick. Uncle Thorny, this is the gang. This is Shaggy. Hi, hi. Fred. Oh, oh. Velma, pleasure. And Scooby Doo, nice to meet you, Uncle Tony. Smile. You gotta love that everyone in this franchise's world is perfectly fine with a dog that can talk. Sure, it's normal for Scooby Doo, but in reality, I think this is how it would go down. Nice to meet you. Why does everybody do that? While unpacking, Shaggy falls off the top of the van and lands in the arms of Velma. 
which proceeds to have him begin falling in love with her. I guess this could be a reference to the Mystery Incorporated cartoon which had these two as a couple. Plus, it gave birth to my favorite line from Scooby in that show. Stop it, Shaggy. I'm not stupid. Are you cheating on me? I don't know what it is about, but that makes me laugh my ass off. But here, it's just a side plot to be put in the movie. Anyway, Shaggy talks about being in love with Velma to Scooby as he gets this response. Do you think it's possible that... I don't know... that she and I are... meant to be? <laughs> Thanks for the support, pal. I'll remember this come flea season. <laughs> okay, I get it. He's laughing because he finds that really hard to believe. But the famous laugh we know of this dog is like three seconds long. Here having him laugh almost like a human is pretty creepy. Fun fact, this along with the other terrifying Scooby-Doo live action moments are played on a continuous loop when you go to hell. Shaggy meets up with Velma on the beach to try and express his emotions to her, but she's distracted after finding... a Chaos Emerald? Hey, find six more and we'll get a good Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Because right now, I mean, what the shit is this? Later that night, the country club is having a little banquet when all of a sudden the power goes out, Fog begins to enter the tent, as everyone sees the silhouette of... Gilman? Well, I'll give it credit. Still looks better than the Rampage movie. That thing can't be real. Can it? I don't know. I'm not getting close enough to find out. Hi. You gotta love how Shaggy sees this monster, and his first reaction is to be like, Hey, that's groovy, dude. Of course, everyone is scared enough that they might not come back to the country club, which makes Daphne's uncle upset. But they tell him not to worry, as they're going to figure out the mystery of this lake monster. The first suspect is a man who lives near a lighthouse and... By the light of the silvery moon Okay, guess we're taking a detour from the plot to have a song number. We now have Shaggy daydreaming about Velma while singing By the Light of the Silvery Moon. This kind of reminds me of that song number from the first Fred movie. And if I have to bring up not one, but two of those movies while talking about your movie, then you know we're in bad shape. But then for some reason, halfway through the fantasy, they do a rendition of the song in the way of Blitzkrieg Bop by the Ramones. What? Okay, look, I already have one bad live-action adaptation destroying one of my favorite songs. I don't need another! You know, I just realized something. So far, most of this movie seems to remind me of bad shit from other movies I've already talked about. Is it possible that this movie has some sort of evil power? And is able to travel through time to see other bad movies? To study them and see how they could be able to piss me off? Nah, this movie's just shit. Getting back to the story, they seem to come across the lake monster. Man, the effects budget really went down. Actually, it's a guy in a suit who scares people on the beach at night. Well, to be fair, he did scare people when living in Hell House. He invites them inside and tells them the story of a witch who claimed this land many years ago. You know, this backstory would be interesting if I wasn't thinking about watching The Witch's Ghost. It'd be much better viewing than this. I mean, it has Tim Curry. That man could do no wrong. And one day, she fulfilled her dark oath. Using her magical staff, she cast a spell upon an innocent creature of the lake. Or as anyone else would call it... A frog. So what I got from all of that is the witch warned people to stay off the land, then she cast a spell on a frog becoming Gilman, as it proceeds to go out and get those who did listen to our warning. Again, is it too late for me to start watching this? I mean, come on you guys. It has Tim Curry! The next day, the gang's going for security footage of the witch to see who it is, but the computer is fried due to Velma spilling her tea on it. 
Well, there's no way that she did it on purpose so that it could be a twist to make her a part of the villain's plan. Spoiler alert, that is totally the reason. Later that night while making a snack with Scooby, Shaggy begins to smell the scent of Velma. Is that who did Dinkley I detect? Maggie? Maggie? <laughs> Okay, even for this series, that's a new definition of weird. Velma! Uncle Joe? Buffy? Paul? Jim? Chief? McCloud! Oh, Velma, is that you? <laughs> he sees Gilman and runs away with friend Daphne falling behind him in a really bad day for Nightshot. They split up with Scooby saving Shaggy on an ATV to only land in a sand trap. But they do find another one of those gems they found on the beach. Meanwhile, Fred and Daphne are hiding in a sports equipment store in disguises, which just so happens to be the old outfits from the cartoon. It's good to know that LeVan is still losing the same mentality as the last movie. They all meet up to see what Gilman has done to the country club as Daphne's uncle begins to fear for the worst. Cancelled memberships and now all this damage. I hate to say it, I may have no choice but to shut this place down and go back to my life as an international playboy. You say that like it's a bad thing. The next day, they find Velma on the beach and notice that she has warts on her hands. So, her always disappearing when Gilman appears, waking up with no memory of the previous night, and now having warts on her hands? Yeah, nothing suspicious here. They begin to figure out more on the witch, but Shaggy finally has the guts to ask Velma out on a date. She accepts as they both meet up later that night. Good evening, Norval. <laughs> Shaggy, aren't you gonna say anything? I like corn dogs. Well, I've got a hand to them. That might just be the dumbest line in the movie. Early in the movie, we see that Scooby has become jealous that Shaggy wants to spend more time with Velma rather than him, as we see him try to ruin their date. Scooby, get out of here, buddy. You're gonna ruin everything. No. Hmm. Okay. But would you do it for a uh, Scooby snack? I can't be bummed. Hmm. Now you listen, Scoob. I'm the master, and I command you to go back to your room and quit being such a bad dog. Hmm. Puppy loving <laughs> Red. <sighs> bad dog. <laughs> I'll show you a bad dog. <laughs> well, I know it's gonna be in my nightmares tonight. It's this CG monster staring into my soul. <laughs> the day is then cancelled as Velma becomes more attracted to the gem Shaggy found as it makes him and Scooby have a huge fight, which is followed by them drawing a line in the room with acne paint and Shaggy reading a Batman comic. Get it? Because those are two properties of Warner Brothers. Ha. <sighs> They're able to get information of the witch as it turns out that she has an ancestor. So they go to her house to reveal that the witch is already there, resulting in the classic chase scene from the cartoon, which then leads into the beginning of the movie, ending with them catching her to reveal who it is. It's you? What? Like it can be! <laughs> Velma? No! She's able to escape as the ancestor wakes up after being knocked out. She explains that as soon as Velma touched one of the gems, it woke the spirit and compelled her to find the rest of them. Like Zoinks! It's been right under our noses! Like, we really suck as detectives, man! They manage to find the possessed Velma in a cave, as she's getting ready to make some friends for Gilman. Oh, you've been a faithful servant. And now, I think you deserve some playmates. <laughs> Well, no wonder she didn't want people on her land. She was trying to make a Battletoads movie. Shaggy 
Shaggy tries to save Velma by making her cast the witch out as the frogmen are chasing Fred, Daphne, and Scooby. Holy shit! He just took that down with one punch! The hell with Shaggy! I think we all know who the real demigod is! Yeah, I think you might be right on this one. Well, wait a minute! How'd you get in here? Uh, your door was unlocked. So, you were just standing in the corner of my room this whole time? Yup. Well, that's not creepy. Nah, get over it! You've had worse people coming here. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna make another lowercase Twitter post about Pro Jared sending dick pics. <laughs> I gotta remember to lock my door when I'm filming these. It seems Shaggy isn't doing well to save Velma, so he tries singing By the Light of the Silvery Moon. Wait, why would that work if that was in his fantasy? Plus, I don't think even Velma would know that song. But who cares, it works anyway as the witch and the frogmen are defeated by the power of love. God, this is stupid. This, of course, leads to Shaggy and Velma kissing. But there's a twist. I don't know too much about chemistry. I do. Shaggy and... Well... There just wasn't any. Well now, that just makes this dumbass subplot entirely pointless. Anyone else agree? Please raise your middle finger. Yeah, that's what I thought. They're, of course, thanked by Daphne's uncle with a check for $10,000 as they agree to make their own detective agency called Mystery Incorporated, as Scooby slips into some hijinks, leading him to land in the arms of Shaggy. Wait, why is Scooby getting the same love at first sight treatment like the others? You don't think that means... Okay, well, to be fair, I would expect fanfiction of Shaggy and Scooby than I would of Shaggy and Velma. The movie ends with the gang singing a song in the way of many different genres, and I think you already know how I feel about this. Me and my homies solve mysteries through cartoons, movies, and tons of DVDs. As old school goes, we're genuine, we've been kicking it since 1969. But mystery is always more adventurous. Turn me to So that was Scooby-Doo Curse of the Lake Monster. What a surprise, it sucks. It's essentially the same issue I had with Shark Tale, where it's nowhere near as bad as other movies I've seen, however it is a chore to get through. This just feels like a sequel that was not needed in the first place. A part of me wishes that Levant should have just stuck with one Scooby-Doo movie. Oh, what am I kidding? All of me wishes that he would have just done one movie. This is just a bad and unnecessary sequel. Plain and simple. Well, we can only hope the next movie to end this marathon can't be worse than this. I mean, it's not like they could do another origin story for these characters but only follow two of them and have nothing to do with the original source material. I mean, th that would just be stupid. I'll see you guys next time. What am I reviewing next time? Corn dogs. <laughs> 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 <laughs>